This morning I want to pick up on something that God seems to have been doing for more than a year now at Living Grace. Um, I probably noticed last year that there was a group of us and uh, that got really interested in what God was doing in Feldy Brennan. Ever heard of that? Herman explained. It's spelled in, in a funny way. It's Welsh and it's pronounced a Feldy Brennan. It's in... Um, West South Wales, out in the sticks where no one lives, and it's a Christian retreat center and house of prayer. And God has been doing something at that place, and there's one or two books were written about it by the guy that uh, ended up to be the retreat director, and it inspired people here in this church, probably a good half a dozen, and out of it came our own house of prayer, that is inspired by it. Um, so it's open Tuesday and Saturday, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, with vision to expand as we are house, manning the house of prayer. And then this new emphasis in our church that is on blessing. Did you pick up this blessing? And there are two resources that are so available. I think Debbie got that little book here, The Awesome Power of Blessing, which is actually explaining what is actually blessing. And how does it work? Because it's not the same as praying for people. It's blessing people. So that's, that's a brilliant little book. And then we've been crafting our own prayers, or a group has been crafting our own blessing, prayers and blessings for Toowoomba and various institutions just to cover our region with blessings. So that's been happening. I've been watching it. And it's a good more than a year now so I want to introduce to you the story of Felder Brennan and what God has actually been doing there. And I want to ask the question, is there more of what God is doing there that is applicable here? Is God wanting to do something here that mirrors what's happening in Felder Brennan? Okay, it, I begin the story by the time when the new director or leader of the retreat center, his name is Roy Godwin, got to the place. The board was unanimous. We want this man and his wife Daphne. They are meant to come. They are the new leaders. We are open to new directions. So he had permission to take it anywhere. But he is at Feldy Brennan out in the sticks among stone houses. And he says to God, you've made a mistake. You know, it's been a, quite a few months that I haven't brought anyone to faith in Jesus Christ. I'm an evangelist. I bring people to Jesus. What am I doing out in the sticks where no one lives? By myself, like this retreat. God, you've made a mistake. I've got to get out of here. Unless you do anything, um, I can't stay. So he talks to his wife about it, as, as you do. And she's pretty smart. She says, why don't you talk to God about it? <laughs> he hadn't really done that before. So, um, and then he had that kind of prayer that I just had related. He talked to God like that. And, well, then he was finished. He had, he had said his piece. And then a few hours later, there's a car driving up the driveway. And uh, husband and wife, they get out and say, hey, you know, like, what is this place? What's going on here? I mean, they don't know. They don't know what it is, but they felt compelled to drive up the driveway and, and check out this place. So they offer them a cup of tea, have a bit of a chat, and then they take them on the tour of the grounds, you know, the views, the, the garden and the stone house and whatever. And, and then the last place they go to is the chapel, the chapel where there's... You know, the guys in the retreat center, whatever. And when they're at this chapel, the Holy Spirit's presence comes over them and they rather heavily sit down or fall, fall down, but, you know, they have a seat. And, um, and then Roy Godwin, uh, spur of the moment, says, I created a new tradition. We like to bless people here when they come. And so they were not Christians. Would you mind if I bless you? And then very simply, I bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless um, God's purpose for your life. And I bless all the situations in your life. And while he's blessing them, 
the Holy Spirit increases and they start weeping. And when they start weeping and the Holy Spirit is working on them, he leaves them. He says, okay, you have that moment alone with God. And then later on, they're so grateful. They never saw this coming. They had an encounter and an experience of God. And he was able to share a little bit more about Jesus. And then they left. Now, Roy Godwin did not connect his earlier prayer with what just happened. <laughs> which is so many times us. We pray for something and then God answers and we don't even recognize. Because he didn't recognize it, um, God kept doing it again and again and again and again until the penny finally dropped. He was an evangelist in the house of prayer and a retreat center and God was bringing the lost. They didn't even know why they came. This, this one guy with his uh, wife, he said, I've had my driver's license for more than 40 years. But I would have sworn if I took and taken my hands off the wheel, the car would have come up here anyway. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. They, what is this place? What's going on here? And then, so it's a retreat center, house of prayer. We believe the presence of God here is here and people can come here to encounter God. Then he says, oh yeah, okay. That reminds me of the bishop and the prostitute. And he tells a pornographic joke. And then after the first one, he tells the second one. Like quite inappropriate, like in a Christian retreat center. So they have a cup of tea at the kitchen table. And Roy Godwin wants them to leave. And you know, they, he keeps telling these blue things. So um, he finally feels his right, his anger coming up a righteous rebuke coming out of his mouth and God crystal clear super clear told don't rebuke that man don't rebuke that man so shows them around the ground finally they end up in the chapel again uh, they bless him and the presence of God the, the, the guy you know mid flow of whatever coming out of his mouth he puts one foot in the chapel and he starts crying like a baby and the Spirit of God is all over him, and, and he cries out, God, I did not know that you were real. I had no idea. People talked about you, but I didn't believe, and I didn't care, but you're so real. I'm so unclean. How can I ever be clean in my life? How can, I ever, how can you have ever mercy on me? So he, he cries profusely like a baby, and also his wife, the Spirit is all over her. She's sitting down and she's weeping as well and Roy Godwin leaves again leaves them alone with God and they, they have that time with God and they're so grateful for what they've encountered they didn't see that one coming so I should just show you a little clip one minute so you, you actually get a bit of a sense what it looks like and you, you get to hear from the man himself and his wife so, Roy and Daphne Godwin, Feldy Brennan, in Wales. You know, so many people come, they got no reception. I think 100,000 a year. I've got to double check. I don't even know how they would fit that many people there. Come from all nations. Yeah, you get there. Okay. Worship 
because of the living God through Jesus Christ. And to make this a very easy sign for people who are visiting to have an encounter with God. That's really our heart, to do those two things, to worship God and to allow others to encounter Him. And they certainly do encounter Him. Okay, so you get a bit of a sense. Does it look a little bit secluded and lonely? Yes. So what do they do? What's their purpose? Worship God. Make it an easy place where people can encounter Him. And they do. They come from all over the place. Would that kind of mission strategy work here? Why not? Yes. But would you agree with me that lots of people would counsel you to go the opposite way instead of expecting that people would come to you the, the message always is church you got to get out you got to get out of the four walls of the church and you got to be in the streets and the highways and the byways and go out does that sound familiar is that wrong no it's not wrong but but god can do many different ways and things and I would say when you look at the Bible, an equally strong theme is, of mission theme is, that God brings people. Yes. So I, I, I show it to you in the Bible, how strong that theme is. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. The Holy Spirit, they get baptized for the first time. That's when the church really begins, reaching out begins. So the Holy Spirit falls on them. And did they go out or did the people come? They all came. The whole city came because God may, may created a sound like a violent wind and they, everyone came to check it out. And then, you know, ready-made audience to preach. Um, Acts 5, crowds gathered, bringing their sick and those tormented by impure spirits. So when word gets out that healing is available here in Jesus' name, would people come? Yes. They will come. Acts 19, this is about Paul in Ephesus. He had discussions daily in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. This went on for two years so that all the Jews and Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. So how did a whole region of Asia, that's Roman province. How did they hear the word of the Lord? What was Paul's mission strategy? He was in one gymnasium, one lecture theater for two years. Every day he was preaching there and everyone came and heard. Um, Luke 8, while a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. From every village of Galilee they came, and they came to him. Now this is about John the Baptist, the whole Judean countryside, and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. So they were also coming to John the Baptist. And then Isaiah 60, and Tatiana will use that passage um, down the track. So steal your thunder. It says, nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. People are going to be attracted by the light and by the brightness among us. What is that? What is that brightness? Yeah, it's, it's the glory of God. It's the presence of God. It's the beauty of God. It's His peace. His strength, His power, His joy. When that is available, when people can encounter God here, they will come. Okay, is that, is that happening here at Living Grace already? Yes, yeah, so two weeks ago we had newcomers barbecue and uh, newcomers afternoon tea. And so many testimonies are amazing that God places people in our midst they come here because God is arranging, setting it up. Like, did, did you share at that time, already physically sitting somewhere else on Sunday morning and feels compelled to get up and drive to church here? Uh, we already get visitors from interstate that are coming. 
may, may do a holiday in Queensland and make sure this one is on the map as well, they come here. Okay, and it's probably also explaining why when you have the summary statements of the church in Acts, why did the beginning of the church, there's hardly a word spent on how to do mission work and how to reach out and where they, everything went. Everything, the focus was squarely on the community and what the community looked like where people could be added to. And they, for instance, I give you Acts 2, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. So like, like Faldi Brennan on worship. All the, and together, all the believers were one in heart and mind. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them. Okay, is that difficult or is that easy? As mission strategies goes, it's pretty easy. That people just come. They come through that door and here they are. They may not even know why. They're not Christians, but suddenly they're sitting among us and experience a worship service among us. So it's easy to welcome people and show them a seat. And then it's also easy what uh, Roy Godwin, what they do at that retreat center, when the Holy Spirit comes and people come into the presence of God, they slip away. They don't even explain much. They don't even lay hands on them. They're just like, okay, I'm out of here. It's you and God. Did, did you pick that up? It's so, because sometimes it can be, the way we're doing it can be a really lengthy process. Like, you know, someone comes with burdened and lots of stuff and then you sit them down, what's going on in your life and then it all comes out and it's not only one root cause, it's two, it's three, it's ten, it's twenty. It takes weeks to do all the counseling necessary to deal with all the things that have gone wrong in life. And, well, at the retreat center, they, they don't even have that time. People are there only a short time. It really cuts down the process if you say, okay, I don't need to know everything because Jesus knows everything. So you, you just sit there with Jesus and he's going to sort it out. And, he, and amen, it's, it's pretty good. I mean, I, I notice here that with churches as well, sometimes people come in and they, they become part of the church and they keep become really broken and things are happening in their life and you know some of them for the first maybe four eight ten fifteen weeks every sunday you know they they come forward to the prayer line they receive prayer they're out in the holy spirit they're weeping on the carpet lots of tears and lots of stuff happening the holy spirit is all over them but after 10 15 weeks they're right they're different people I'm not going. You know, amen. amen, amen. And some pe some people sometimes say to me, "Oh, do you know their background?" You know, other pastors. You know, do you know their background? They need heavy duty, intense counselling. They need special experts to get them right. Yeah, that's good. Good to tell me. But we don't have those special experts. And if you want to get those special experts, they charge big money. And we don't have the big money, the hundreds and thousands of dollars to do all the counseling necessary that everyone thinks is necessary. So all we got is the Holy Spirit and a carpet. I mean, I've seen it work over the years. People come with all sorts of things and you don't need to know the details. But God is doing Holy Spirit time. Amen. Um, so that is good in itself. So you don't, and you don't have to argue all, the, all this time. There was this one young woman came. She was a new age traveler. Didn't have money for accommodation. So they took her in and gave her a little job. And so she attended chapel and she didn't really know what was going on. But um, they taught her that before every meal, they had a short Bible reading and then a short prayer, a one sentence prayer. Lord Jesus, um, please 
If you're real, you unfold, you explain, you make the, the truth of the Bible alive for me. You teach me the truth of the Bible. So, yeah, next day, breakfast, whatever, she says, ah, oh, you know, all the other religions, they're true as well. It's not just Christianity. There are different pathways to God, and they're all the same. And then Roy Godwin says, well, the Bible says that Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me, which is, he's the only way. And then she wants to argue the case and get into it, and Roy Godwin says, I'm not prepared to argue the truth. I'm not prepared to argue the Bible. If you want to have an argument, you've got to take it up with Jesus himself, and you talk to him about it. <laughs> that is not bad, hey? And it works. Because next day, they, you know, they were meant to have a day off, but right early at breakfast time, she knocks and says, Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me that I have a Father in heaven that loves me and that has a purpose in life for me? Why didn't you tell me that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died for my sins? How do you know all of that? Because he told me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Did you know that's what happens when someone gets born again? When the Holy Spirit moves on a person, the truth of the Bible, the truth of God, He's powerful and big enough for people to get it. He can communicate with His little creations, men and women. You know, we're not too big or complicated for God. He, he can actually... Tell us what we need to know if we only want to know. So, and I, 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 I quote to you what she, um, she, she discovered. You didn't tell me about the fire. So uh, he wasn't quite sure what, what is she talking about. You te didn't tell me that God has fire and he can put his fire in you so that you can blaze for him, and when you encounter other people, the fire is put on you, can touch other people, so they catch the fire for him as well. So, she doesn't know how to put it in language, but what's the fire? It's the Holy Spirit. It's promised to all believers that, you know, Jesus is the one that, those that love him, he fills them with the Holy Spirit, and there's a fire coming in your life that is full of energy and life, and passion, and power. And you can get so full of the presence of God and His fire that others catch the fire too. So with her, it happened on the same day she walks to the town, it's four miles walking. So she meets a guy, and the guy is coming towards her, and she feels like God is telling her something about the guy. And she says, look, she talks to him, he says, look, we don't know one another at all, but I feel like God is telling me that he's heard your prayer and he's going to answer it and you're no, you're no longer to worry. So he bursts out in tears and says, are you an angel? <laughs> she, she assures him she's not an angel. But he prayed this in the morning in desperation to God about an issue and he said, God, if you've heard my prayer, please today send me an angel that tells me you've heard the prayer. Amen. Angel is the word for messenger. He certainly got a messenger from God. So the fire is blazing. So four miles walk, finally is down in the village, goes to the pub, as her habit was. Um, there's a guy sitting there, and he's known her and said, you're not the same person that I've known. You've changed. You've got something that I always wanted in life. What is it and how do I get it? Hallelujah. Go to Felder Brennan. <laughs> well, he did. He got the cup of tea, he got the walk around and he was, ended up in chapel and God did what he did. Is that complicated? No. It's not That's really cool. complicated. So, there are probably three, three... Just think about it. Like, God, if you want to do it here have all the permission. That's probably all we can handle. So mission strategy, number one is, first step is, God brings them. Yeah, cup of tea. Cup of tea, like uh, morning tea. So God brings them. 
Um, then you slip away. <laughs> so they come, you get out of the picture. And before you do, you bless them. And, and blessing is pretty easy as well. It's not a long prayer or anything. You don't know, need to know specifics. But you can bless them with the power, the life, the grace, the goodness of God. You just put that on people. And trust that God will deal with people that have come, that he's drawn. Now, this blessing business. Um, that's an emphasis. I mean, we all know... We, in church, you can bless. Worship service usually finishes with a blessing. It comes straight from the Bible. But do we know the power of blessing? That, they discovered it more or less by accident, how powerful it is when in Jesus' name you bless someone. Anything can happen in response to that. And what blessing does is, you know, we may not, you know, God may bring people and it's a whole church, probably not everywhere out in the streets, but once you start blessing people and that emphasis comes into you, you're no longer inward focused. It's no longer just about you. But you take an active interest in the whole community and all the people that live around you and you actively bless them. Because God is everywhere. We can bless and God can move. So, and, and why Godwin also liked, it's so different from the other strategies that we seem to know as Christians, like we got to sort people out so they know the truth. You're believing the wrong thing. Let me tell you what's right. Your worldview is flawed and sinful. Let me argue with you about that. How attractive is that? It's like, yeah, everyone will have their backs up, and you know, before you, anything happens, you're correcting people all the time. Ah. So on that foundation of judgment, not, not much can grow. Blessing people is completely different. And lots of people argue with that, saying, you cannot bless people that are not Christians yet. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. It's a mandate, you, know, you can bless everyone. God is a God of blessing. He made people. He made the world. He loves everyone. He says, when people curse you, you bless them in return. Even when they do evil things to you, you bless them. You speak the goodness of God over them, and it's powerful. So you don't have to sort them out first. You just bless them. And, and, and like, you, you know when that guy with the blue stories came? Don't rebuke the man. It's no use rebuking people when they're so far away from God. When they have an encounter with God, it comes automatically. I mean, the awareness of our sinfulness and of our own shortcomings and Humility comes when you ex encounter a big God that, and His love is undoing you. And, you know, they called it the grace outpouring. Grace outpouring. And He liked grace first. That's, that's why it's in the books. So not judgment, not sorting out, not arguing, but grace first, an encounter with God first, a healing first, uh, whatever God wants to do first. Grace first, and I thought, we are living grace. <laughs> so, maybe there's something in the name. There is. So, man, that is simple and easy. So, what were the steps again? Just in case we, we don't know how it works. God brings them. We slip out. Give them time with God by themselves. And we bless them. Yeah, I love that. So, there is a challenge though. And it was for Roy Godwin as well. Like He's been a you know, minister and serving God for decades and brought lots of people to Jesus. But they felt this call, Tal de Brennan, is meant to be a house of prayer. But how do you make something a house of prayer? Like especially out in the sticks, you know, other prayer houses have at least 100 people so... Everyone can pray around the clock and, you know, the prayer room is never empty day and night and other churches do it like that. But, you know, they haven't even got the manpower to do that. And then they were also a retreat center. How do you combine the two? What's the story? And, and then God spoke to him and he said, look, if you wanted to become a house of prayer, 
You have to become a house of prayer first. Oh. You know, he was an evangelist. He was busy doing things for God all the time. He was working for God. And like he had hardly had time for prayer. Like, you know, he would plan. He would share the gospel with the Bible. And then just add a prayer. God, when I come and talk to that person about Jesus, just let the Holy Spirit be on me. Just a quick prayer along the way. And God said, that's not going to do it. If you want the presence of God, if, if, if you want to have a, a, a place where people can encounter God easily, you've got to make it a house of prayer, and you've got to become a man of prayer, a house of prayer yourself. Are we? That's the challenge. That's the challenge. Because we can all, you know, it's all, it's, that, that story in testimony is fun. Like, the testimonies are amazing. You read the book one after another one. The testimonies are great. And testimonies coming in out of living grace, they are great. But they do not happen without God. You cannot just have all that excitement without God. And if you want God, you've got to be available for God. You've got to actually seek His presence. You've got to remain number one in your life. And sometimes in church, you know, the way we do it is like, ah, you know, let Debbie and Leslie pray in the house of prayer. So glad we have it. It makes, makes it a pretty good church. Let them pray or let this person pray. Let that person pray. But really, for a church, the call is we're all people of prayer. In the early church, you know, they had amazing power and grace in the church but and it says they devoted themselves to the fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayer devoted to prayer i thought that's just that's the challenge but on the other hand it's still not complicated well it, it, sometimes a bit like fitness it's, it's, it's not the perfect example, but like, who really likes to go to the gym? Oh, yeah, Chris. Chris, you're the wrong man. Like, like, actually getting there is hard, right? Sometimes getting there is hard. You don't want to go. But who likes coming home from the gym? Yeah, that's, it's usually not a bad feeling, but to get there, it, with prayer, it's a bit the same. You've got to quieten down. You've got to find time. You, you've got to enter into the presence of God. But once there, and once you're into prayer, it's not that hard because God is a good God. And to get in touch with the, lo the love of God and the joy of God and the wisdom of God, and man, you can encounter God. The Almighty God, He loves us. It's not that bad. It's not that complicated either. It doesn't cost any money. You can do it anywhere. Okay. So, become a house of prayer ourselves. Now, there's something else. And I, I want to say it straight away. When you read the book, sometimes when you listen to people and you just listen to the highlights, you think, oh, that's, that's so removed from us. Because who lives a life with only highlights? You know, Stuart, you, you, you talked about two healings the other week. Does that kind of thing happen every day or every week? No. No. And you think, oh, God, I had an amazing week. I shared it. It's on YouTube now and people are watching it all over the world. But like, God, what about this week? Don't you love me anymore? I went a whole week without healing anyone. I went a whole week without an amazing testimony. It's just, what's going on? And then two weeks and like, and at, at Faldi Brennan, that's how it was. They have an amazing season. Like, there was one, se so different ones. One was for an entire year. People got healed of any healing stuff. Deep brokenness, God healed it. Bang, bang, bang. Just one after the other. And then nothing. That sort of lifted. And then there was another season. Um, people got saved. They were not Christians. They ended up, a whole wave of, conversions and then a whole wave of people supernaturally sovereignly 
baptized with the Holy Spirit and, you know, this wave comes and then nothing. Suddenly the sense of God's presence seemed to so lift. It, it was no longer, you know, that you wanted to weep in chapel and, you know, and then Roy Godwin did what we all do when it so lifts. God, did I, did I offend you? Don't you like me anymore? Is, is the season of my calling gone? Am I at the wrong place? God, um, so we get, and then one day there come two ministry leaders from the States, husband and wife, and suddenly the wife looks at him in a funny way and he knows she, had a, she got a word for him. And then later she said, can I share the word? And he said, yeah, please. And, and she said, that God is dealing with you in ebbs and flows. In ebbs and flows. So flows when all the, all the amazing stuff happens. And then there are also ebbs where not much happens. And the reason why God is doing that for you so that the move of God here is sustainable. So when things are slowing down a little bit, is you can catch your breath. You can have a sleep and a rest. And basically you can do all the things you need to do, like fix the fence. <laughs> like, like do the stuff that needs to be doing. You can't live in the intensity of every, you know, every five minutes someone is knocking at the door and there's deep healing and ministry issues. You've you got to have some ebb time where you can catch your breath and where you just do the things that you need to do in life. Right? You've got to pay your bills and raise your kids and do this and do that. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's in God's anointing and according to God's calling. So don't put it on you, you that you know, it's just got to be one continuous stream of highlights. It's ebbs and flows, but it's all in the purpose and the will of God. Amen. Okay. So the question I asked, beginning Feldy Brennan, it already inspired people here. So for more than a year, we got emphasis on blessing. We got a house of prayer now. What do you think is what God did at Feldy Brennan? Is, is that something that you think he wants to do here as well? I, I think so. I mean, it's still not stopping some of us to go out on the highways and byways and shopping centers and do all sorts of stuff. But this place, Living Grace, got to be a place where people can come and there's a worshiping community and where the encounter with God is easy. Would you agree? We, want, we, we need the presence of God here always among a people that know how to pray and come into the presence of God themselves so that when, God, when people come with whatever need, God can do a deep thing with them. So when they come, what's the strategy? God brings them, leave them alone, slip away, just bless them. We can do that. Amen. Amen.